Intro to Logic Part 6, Deduction versus Induction. This video looks at the two main types of logical reasoning. Deductive arguments are ones that claim that the conclusion follows necessarily from the premises. And this is a logical necessity, which means that if the premises are true, it is logically impossible for the conclusion to be false. Not all deductive arguments are actually meeting this criterion. If you have an argument where if premises are true, it's logically impossible for a conclusion to be false, this is a valid argument. However, deductive arguments are classified as such because they make the claim to be valid. So this really is defining the deductive reasoning based on the intention of the person giving the argument. And the intention is something you can interpret generally based on context. Here's an example. Jupiter is a planet in our solar system. Every planet in our solar system is smaller than the sun. Therefore, Jupiter is smaller than the sun. Now, this argument does happen to be logically valid, i.e., it's necessary that if the premises are true, the conclusion is true. So that's a clear indicator that it is a deductive argument. However, also be on the lookout for arguments which try to be valid, but which fail. That would be an example of an invalid deductive argument. Inductive arguments claim that the premises make the conclusion probably true. So if the premises are true, it would be improbable that the conclusion is false. Here's an example. The consensus among climate scientists is that the average global temperature is increasing Therefore, the average global temperature is increasing. This is an inductive argument. We can see this because the premise does make the conclusion probable. This is a strong inductive argument, but it is not a valid argument. That is, it is not a valid deductive argument. It's still possible for the conclusion to be false, even if the premise is true. Consensus among scientists is generally a good reason to believe something, but scientists are not infallible. It's logically possible that they can get something wrong. And in fact, this is often how science progresses. Uh, however, in this case, it is probably true with high degree of probability that global temperature is increasing. So notice that in order to be truly deductive, you have to reach a very high criterion, a very strict standard of proof. Deductive arguments don't just claim that the premises make the conclusion probable. That's what an inductive argument does. A deductive argument is saying that if the premise is true, it's logically impossible. It's inconceivable without contradiction for the conclusion to be false. So mathematical arguments are examples of arguments that are deductive, but many of the arguments we use in daily life that have a lower standard of proof would count as inductive. So let's look at some of the kinds of inductive arguments. Once you know some of the main types, it can be easier to classify arguments as inductive. One type of inductive argument is analogical. This argument reasons that because two things share some properties, they therefore share another property. Here's an example. I previously owned a Chevy. It lasted longer and needed fewer repairs than my sister's Ford. Therefore, my new Chevy will also last longer and need fewer repairs than her Ford. So the things being compared are the old Chevy and the new Chevy. They're not identical. Um, they could even be like different models, even though they have the same make or manufacturer. So this would count as an argument by analogy because they share some properties, same manufacturer, but um, they don't share all properties. And so you're trying to say, these two things are alike in one respect, therefore they'll be alike in this other respect too. Another kind of inductive argument is statistical. A statistical argument claims that because something is true of a sample, it is therefore true of a population. Sample and population are terms from statistics and a population can be any group or set of things. And a sample is generally a proper subset of the population, so it does not include the entire population, at least not in a statistical argument. You're looking at a subset, some fraction of the population, observing their properties, and then trying to conclude 
Therefore, the whole population has the same pattern of properties. Here's an example. In a survey of 1,000 university students, 80% said they expect to have a tougher time buying a home than their parents. Therefore, 80% of all university students expect to have a tougher time buying a home than their parents. So surveys tend to work with statistical reasoning and they would count as inductive arguments. It would only be deductive if you could interview or survey the entire population of university students. Because that would be too costly and impractical, generally you're gonna look for a sample and try to reason from that to the properties of the whole population. Another type of inductive argument is causal. Causal arguments try to prove that one factor is the reason why the explanation or the cause of another factor existing. Causal arguments start with the correlation between the two factors, and then they try to prove that not only are the two factors correlated, that is they're observed together, but one is the reason why the other happens or exists. And they do this by ruling out alternate causes or explanations. So causal reasoning is itself a really complicated subtopic within inductive reasoning. And um, understanding causal reasoning and the evidence for causation is one of the main tasks of science. But here's an example from everyday life. The lamp in my room does not work. I changed the light bulb, but it still did not work. I plugged it into an outlet in a different room, but it still did not work. So it must be the wiring in the lamp that is defective. So this is an example of a causal argument because you're trying to prove that the wiring is the cause of the lamp not working. And you can see how this argument works. It progresses by trying to rule out alternate explanations. Causal arguments are always inductive because at best they can prove the conclusion is probably true based on the premises, but they can never guarantee the truth of the conclusion based on the premises. That is a causal argument will never be valid, but it can be logically strong. In general, deductive arguments are capable of being valid, whereas inductive arguments are at most capable of being strong. Let's look at some sample problems. We're trying to identify whether these arguments are deductive or inductive. We're doing it based on our interpretation of the intention of the person giving the argument. So general tips are that if it's actually valid, we can interpret it as deductive. If it's not valid, then we have to ask, was this intended to prove the conclusion absolutely based on the premises, in which case it's deductive, or was it only intending to make the conclusion probable based on the premises? In that case, it's inductive. So here's our first sample. Anyone 21 or older can legally play the slot machines in Las Vegas. Sam is 22 years old. Therefore, Sam can legally play the slot machines in Las Vegas. Is this a deductive or inductive argument? This is deductive. We know this because it is deductively valid. And so having it being valid means it must be deductive. Um, not all deductive arguments are valid, but all valid arguments are deductive. Another sample, Stan is a Marvel fan. Most people who wear Marvel clothes are Marvel fans and just look at what she's wearing. So is this deductive or inductive? This is inductive. It's not valid, but if that premise is true, most people who wear Marvel clothes are Marvel fans, then that would help prove the conclusion, make the conclusion probable that she is a Marvel fan. So oftentimes if you have indicator words like most or probably, that can be a clue that you're looking at an inductive argument. Another example, last week when my car wouldn't start, dad took me to get a new battery. As soon as I installed it, my car started right up. So my old battery was probably defective. Is this deductive or inductive? This is an inductive argument. So if the premises are true, it makes it probably true that the battery was the cause of the car not starting, but does not guarantee it logically. So in order to be deductively valid, we have to reach a very high standard of proof. Even if all of the evidence of the world points to a certain thing being the cause, it will still never be a valid argument. It's still always at least logically possible, 
however improbable, that there's some other alternate explanation. So for example, in this case, even though this is pretty good evidence the battery was the cause of the car not starting, it's at least conceivable that something else was going on. Like maybe there was some problem with the wiring inside the engine or inside the car and um, that's why it wouldn't start. And then um, it just so happened that the car was bumped or bounced or something that maybe the temperature changed and the wiring problem resolved. And so when the new battery was installed, it actually was able to start up again, even though the new battery had nothing to do with it. Now, this is a highly improbable alternate explanation, but the point is, no matter how much evidence we have for one explanation, it will never rule out alternate scenarios like that. And so this is a good argument, it's strong, but it's inductive, not deductive. Another example, no car battery that has at least one defective cell can be repaired. Your car battery has a defective cell, so it cannot be repaired. Is this deductive or inductive? This is a valid argument, so it must be deductive. If it's true that no car battery that has at least one defective cell can be repaired and your car battery has a defective cell, then it's necessarily true that your car battery cannot be repaired. Remember, not all deductive arguments are valid, but it is true that all valid arguments are deductive. Next up, part seven. We're gonna look at the concept of logical validity in more detail. 